Hi, this is Jay, and I'd like to tell you about some of the books in our YA collection that feature Muslim characters. Um, in these books, there's a somewhat of a spectrum on how the term Muslim is used. Some of them actually do talk about directly the practice, beliefs, and um, language of Islam. Some of the books talk more about the cultures of the countries where Islam is a dominant religion, and other times it's Muslim as an identity marker in terms of there's this group of people who's Muslim and they do things that go with being Muslim, such as wearing hijab, and um, then there's other non-Muslims who are uh, treating them in a certain way because of their stereotypes and false conceptions. So most of these books are a combination of all three of these uh, perspectives of what it means to be Muslim. So uh, the first book I want to tell you about is Not the Girls You're Looking For by Amina May Safi. Uh, the main character's name is Lulu and her dad's side of the family is from Iraq and so her dad's side maintains some traditions and the one that's mentioned in this book is the Ramadan fast. So even though Lulu and her friends at school like to party, she has to um, try to uh, resist the temptation to do things that are against the tradition of Ramadan. And um, so that is in, is in the background, even though Lulu herself is not very religious. Um, another one that is more of an identity thing is a graphic novel called I Was There American Dream by Malika Garib, who is a journalist with NPR. Um, it's a really fun little graphic novel. It's not very long, um, and it's got a lot of positive um, perspective to it. Even though Malika comes from a very diverse type of background because her dad is from Egypt and her mom is from the Philippines. So from her dad's side, he's a Muslim and her mom is Catholic, and so she has family members all over the place. She was born in the United States, but... Um, uh, when her, during her childhood, her parents split up and her dad moves back to Egypt. So she's kind of left, uh, given the permission to negotiate her own identity and her own religious beliefs. And, uh, then when she moves to a, a place, another place that's not as diverse as California, which is where she was born, she has to try and understand herself better and also help the people around her, including her future husband, understand her better. So it's a, it's a positive vision of constructing identity in America from partly a Muslim background. Written in the Stars by Aisha Saeed. It's about a girl named Nyla who is born in the United States to very traditional and conservative Pakistani parents. And she is caught by them um, having a boyfriend that they didn't approve of. And part of the reason they didn't approve of him is because his family is kind of fallen from their eyes and from grace because they did something that was disagreeable uh, in their point of view. So anyway, Nyla uh, is taken to Pakistan as a way of trying to correct her behavior and her idea that she can choose her own future. Whereas, uh, so anyway, in Pakistan, uh, she she uh, meets her family. She had never been there before, and she likes it at first. She can, you know, speak the language well enough and gets used to life in this very traditional small village. Um, but it turns out that her parents were planning something for her to t completely take away her future, her right to her future, and it's a very terrifying experience. It's a, it's a strong, uh, very emotional book. Um, and at the end of the book, she's about to meet up with her parents after this is all over. And we're not told whether she reconciles with them, but that's kind of working up to that at the end. And after they have caused this very distressing set of circumstances for her, can she forgive them? Does she want to forgive them? It's, it's a wonderful book, probably my favorite on, the, on this whole list of books I'm talking to you about today. Uh, now I want to move to talking to you about three books by a Australian author named Rhonda Abdul Fattah. The first one, chronologically, is called "Does My Head Look Big in This?" And on the cover, you can see 
the picture of a, a, a young woman who's wearing a hijab, which is the traditional head covering um, in Islam. And uh, the main character's name is Amal, and she decides to wear hijab to her school in Australia. But that gets some negative feedback, not just from the people at school, but from other people around her. And this book, I would, I would definitely recommend thinking of it as a period piece because it was written not long after the September 11th, 2001 terror attacks. So there are some references in the book, uh, for example, to technology that are kind of dated because 18 years ago they didn't have, or to 19 years ago they didn't have the things that they have now. Uh, and but anyway, uh, it was kind of when the world was, uh, or at least the Western world was opening its eyes to Islam. Some in some cases for the first time, because suddenly there was this clash of civilizations or a clash of of ideologies. Because the people who did the September 11th attacks in the United States were Muslim, and they were doing it in the name of conservative Islam. So anyway, this girl is trying to. Um, negotiate her identity and stand strong as a girl wearing hijab in a place that has largely rejected her and of course trying to get along with her friends and being interested in boys and a lot of the other normal things that YA books talk about. Um, the second book I want to talk about by Rhonda Abdul Fattah is called 10 Things I Hate About Me. Uh, the main character's name is Jamila but she goes by Jamie at school because she is trying to hide her uh, Muslim background because she wants to be accepted by the other kids at school. She meets an interesting um, young man in her one of her classes uh, who doesn't seem to care about other people's opinion and it just mystifies her. And so she kind of observes that she's pretty quiet at school, but on at home when she's away from the people at school, she is part of a, a traditional. Uh, instrument music group and so she loves this group but she doesn't want people at school to find out about it so this book doesn't have much of a focus on religion um, but it's more about her understanding of herself and her culture that she comes from um, next uh, this was a more recent book this one was published in 2016 the title is the lines we cross and there's this one goes back and forth from two perspectives uh, one perspective is a guy named Michael and Michael is um, from a set of parents who are very strongly anti-immigrant and they are part of this movement in Australia to try to restrict immigration and very racist uh, overtones to the things that their group does and he hasn't really thought seriously about these beliefs but um, they're at so they're at a rally he's on the anti-immigrant side and then on the other side of the uh, demonstration he's uh, notices this beautiful girl whose name is Mina and she's the other perspective it's written from and Mina actually starts going to Michael's school so he gets to know her a little bit and she starts to challenge him directly and indirectly about his parents views that he has sort of blindly accepted up to that moment so as he gets to know Mina, he starts to research more deeply into the background. Meanwhile, Mina's family has started a restaurant, but these this group that Michael's parents are the leaders of finds out that these people are not legal immigrants, and the reason that Mina's family went to Australia was to escape terrible, terrible violence in Afghanistan. So um, through the course of the book, Michael becomes uh, more critical of his parents' views and becomes an anti-racist um, and stands up for Mina and against his parents. And so that's kind of the central concept of the story. Even though Mina doesn't say a lot directly about Islam, she says more about her identity as part of the community of immigrants in Australia. Um, and that one is also sort of a romance because by the end of the book, Michael and Mina have feelings for each other and, you know, they they start to admit that more openly as the book gets to closer, closer to the end. Another romance that features Muslim characters is called Love from A to Z by S.K. Ali. Two main characters, this one also goes back and forth between the two perspectives. Uh, the girl's name is Zainab and she is um, Pakistani-American. At the beginning of the book she has a confrontation in class with an Islamophobic teacher and uh, <clears throat> she stands up to him so she gets suspended. 
Um, and while she's suspended, her mom sends her to her aunt in Qatar. And so she's hanging out in good Qatar with her aunt. And also on break from school, the male protagonist's name is Adam. And Adam's family converted to Islam. They're Canadian. And uh, so he's, a, he's more of a quiet guy. He's, and he and his family are very devout into their faith. And so they meet uh, in Qatar. And Adam's reason that he's in Qatar is because he has to try to work up the courage to tell his dad that he has multiple sclerosis, which is the same illness that killed his mother. So his dad is grieving his mother's loss, and Adam has the difficult task of telling his dad that he has the same condition. So anyway, Zainab and Adam meet in Qatar, and they start to develop a relationship. They're both experiencing grief and loss for different reasons, um, and they're both very unapologetically Muslim. In um, another romance that has a different tone to it is A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tehere Mafi, who's a popular YA author. Um, but this one is a realistic fiction, and the main character's name is Sheeran. So in A Very Large Expanse of Sea, this girl named Sheeran goes to high school and wearing hijab, and she's Muslim. She doesn't really talk much about her religion here, but it's mostly a, a reflection by the author of growing up in a post-9-11 world where there was a very heavy national mood against is Islam and Muslim people, even if the, the people who were wearing hijab or were Muslim were not supportive of the goals of the September 11th attackers. So it that comes through very strongly in the book that this girl is just feeling rejected and is tired of being stereotyped. Um, she meets a guy named Ocean James who gives her hope that not everyone is like the people who are who are rejecting her. So she's into break dancing uh, with her brother at school and Ocean is into basketball and so his commitment to being Sheeran's friend um, costs him in his pursuit of his hobby but anyway uh, it's it's a book that has a very um, somber tone to it because that's the way the tone was in the United States at the time of the September 11th attacks. No True Believers by Rabia York Lombard has a similar um, main character in, in that she is a Muslim girl going to high school in the United States and she receives um, bad treatment by not only other students who push her down the stairs at, uh, early in the book but also by the uh, school administration. They call her into the office and are suspicious of her because she's Muslim because there was recently, right before that, there was a bombing nearby and just because this girl is Muslim they want to question her and um, so she's feeling pretty pretty uh, wronged about that and then she gets these new neighbors who move in and at first they seem friendly but something seems a little off about them so she using her hacking skills her computer skills um, discovers slowly that these uh, these people have a, a great potential to hurt her and her family and so the end of it kind of becomes a thriller where she's trying to stop the plans of these evil neighbors who are white supremacists. <clears throat> um, another kind of, or, there's some dystopian books that have feature Muslim characters and one of them that's very direct in how it presents the situation is called Interment by Samira Ahmed. Um, her, the main character's name is Layla Amin. And this is an imagined future in which, even in the United States, there's uh, internment camps for people who are Muslim. Um, <clears throat> and so she and her her parents are rounded up and sent to this place called the Mobius Internment Camp. Um, and the public, for whatever reason, has supported the creation of these uh, internment places. And so she is outraged by this and, of course, tries to resist it. And one of the guards of this camp is sympathetic to Layla and tries to help her to um, stand up to this ridiculously 
autocratic leader and they just called the director and he um, is trying his best to marginalize and oppress these people in the camp. It's pretty, a very dramatic book. Um, another dystopian book uh, is called Driving by Starlight. This time the setting is not a nightmarish 1984 like the United States, but it is a uh, fictionalized version of Saudi Arabia um, in which the Islamic religion and custom and ideas about modesty and morality are pushed to the max. And there's these religious police that are making sure everyone's obeying the rules. Meanwhile, this girl named Lena uh, is, and her friends want to sort of push the limits of this uh, society. But of course, Lena's always living in fear that she'll be found out. Um, and her father is a, is in prison because of his political beliefs. He opposed this uh, very heavy-handed regime, and so he's in prison. And uh, so as she and her friends pursue different methods of rebelling against this authority structure, um, their friend group starts to fall apart, and the question at the end of the book becomes, can they escape this nightmarish place? So there's not much discussion in this book of Islam itself. It's more about the, the uh, power of, the, of religion in general, not just Islam, but religion in general to oppress people who, are, who disagree with its views. The last book I want to talk to you about is a pretty unique book. It's called Alif the Unseen by G. Willow Wilson. And uh, the main character's name is, uh, her pseudonym is Alif. He's a computer hacker um, and who creates this very powerful computer program that um, he kind of creates it by accident. And his arch nemesis in this book is a guy named who, who is the security director, cybersecurity director for this country, wherever it doesn't say what country it is. It's a fictionalized uh, Middle Eastern place. And his name is The Hand, or The Hand of God. And he's a, uh, a computer person who is trying to protect this state. And when Alif releases this computer program, it starts to create havoc in the country. And so he has, so most of the book, he's on the run for his life uh, from these people from the hand who are trying to stop him. And meanwhile, he uh, joins forces with some pretty unique characters. One of them is his devoutly Muslim next door neighbor, uh, who he's known his whole life. Um, then he is looking for help and he finds this guy named Vikram the Vampire, who, well, that's his nickname. And in the, in the Quran, there's reference to the jinn or the genies, um, is how we would say it in English. And so Vikram is a jinn, so he's kind of a supernatural creature who so, sort of assumes a human form. But uh, so Vikram is a very colorful character um, in the book, and Vikram is helping Alif and his friends. And at a certain point in the book, they're running away from the people chasing them, and they go into a mosque. And uh, the, the leader of the mosque, his name is Sheikh Bilal, and so Sheikh Bilal helps them too. And um, so Alif is pursued, he's thrown in prison, and by the end of the book he's trying to help these protesters, trying to bring down the hand and their uh, repressive regime. And that makes reference indirectly to the events of the early 2010s with the Arab Spring Movement, which was uh, a movement, pro-democratic movement of people in uh, the... Middle Eastern Arab world. So it's pretty interesting how the author uses uh, Islam in this book as sort of a character by itself because it talks about, um, well, it shows you for in the middle of it, it shows you like the the sheikh at the, at the mosque leading the prayers. Um, you see certain things that the other characters say, especially his next door neighbor, uh, who is devoutly Muslim, and also making reference to the, um, the Thousand and One Nights. So that's just some of the books we have in our collection that feature Muslim characters, and we have more of them that I didn't mention in this video, but just wanted to give you a, an overview of some of the ones we have. And if you have questions or you want to find out other titles that you could check out um, with that focus, we'd be happy to help you with that. 
and uh, we will see you later.